what do we think of when we hear the word change? And I would suggest that this word can evoke various feelings dependent upon the context in which we hear the word. Sometimes it can elicit fear if it threatens the disruption of something that may be so well known and comfortable for us. But other times it might excite us as we anticipate something that may be much needed with a long-awaited improvement in a certain situation or condition. We all know that Lent is all about change. It's about you and I focusing on the most important and fundamental change that is needed in all of us, a turning away from sin and sinful habits to grow closer to Christ. And of course, the gospel that we had just heard is all about change. Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up on a high mountain and he is transfigured before them. St. Matthew tells us that our Lord underwent a most shocking physical change, so that his face shone like the sun, his clothes became white as light. So there is this dramatic visible change, but of course there is no substantial change. Jesus does not become different. He simply reveals his true identity as a son of God. And this is the type of change that Lent offers to you and to me, to be transfigured, to be restored to our true identity, to more fully reveal than who we are, children of our infinitely loving God, called to show to the world his truth and his love. But our sin obscures that identity. Our tendencies now after original sin are not directed to the order and the beauty of God, but to disorder, to selfishness, and to sin. So you and I need to change. We need to go up to the mountain of our Lenten journey to embrace this call to pray and fast and give alms. So again, we might be transfigured in our true identity more fully revealed. You see, sin is never a way in which we are ourselves. It will only be a repudiation of who we are and who we are called to be. In our first reading, taken from chapter 12, the book of Genesis, Abram is called to change. He's called to go forth and to undergo that task that God has planned for him from the beginning. And the Lord says, I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And this is a most profound insight and lesson for you and me in our spiritual life. Because you and I can't change ourselves. God changes us. And he offers us that change always and in every situation by virtue of our baptism in the sacramental life of the church. He offers us his grace and his mercy. Here in the Holy Eucharist, he feeds us with himself to give us his strength that we need in our journey. And then in all the events of our lives, he offers us what we need in each so that we might grow closer to him. For all of us struggle through this imperfect world of suffering and sin and one of the greatest opportunities for us to be transformed will be in our dealing with all situations, particularly those involving pain and loss. Do we recoil from them, which of course is part of our wounded human condition, allowing it maybe to disrupt our lives and our spirits? Or do we embrace those occasions of suffering? seeing in all suffering an opportunity to be united more deeply to the one who suffered and died for us. In our second reading, St. Paul calls us to bear our share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God so that we might advance in that holy life, which is his design. And that's what Lent is all about, to change 
to become more holy, to allow God's design and not our disordered will to guide us always. And so as we are now beginning the second full week of Lent, we pray that we might embrace all those hardships that are ours and all those that we voluntarily choose, those Lenten disciplines of prayer and fasting and almsgiving, so that we might be changed, freed from those sinful inclinations that can assault us to become more fully who we are, sons and daughters of our infinitely loving God, to then to reveal to all his radiant light as we are transfigured by his power and his grace.